Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in today. And today's episode 14 of Manifest Monday. And today's topic, we're gonna to be talking about ways to monetize your music. And we have our special guest, our brother, musician, EB, AKA Muwale. Thanks for joining us today, brother. Happy to I'm excited for this. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate excited. What's happening with us, man? And before we get into it, I gotta give a shout out to my guy, Muwale. He's a singer, songwriter, and a music business executive, born and raised in Ghana, but grew up in Denver, Colorado, the Mile High. As a musician, Maule's music reflects his passion for the human connection. He's inspired by the truth within lived life experiences and publishes music cloaked in deep lyrics and catchy rhythms that serves as a source of both comfort and empowerment for others. And Stop playing I, with him, man. I, Stop playing. Any, Honestly, probably all of us can. A lot of the knowledge that I know about the music industry and just the game in general came from this man himself. You know, the man, the myth, the legend. So I got to give so much, so much kudos, so many uh, gems that he shared over the, over the years, and just uh, the selflessness that he possesses um, is truly remarkable. So uh, the floor is yours, my guy, Maule. Happy to be here with y'all. Um, I, I don't know this monetizing the whole back end i'm sure y'all know from you know discussions we've had it's it's a whole new world mm -hmm. right. that that is ever changing very complex to understand and you know the more the more you dig in, into it the more you feel like man i don't know what's going That's on the <laughs> like, right. it's, a fact. Know, it, it's, right. it's it's so complicated and so um i don't know I don't know what what would be you know the best place to start, but I'm definitely here for the discussion. Mm -hmm. um, I, and so yeah, I kind of want to just, I kind of want to just start with like you moving from like you know being an artist first, and then moving into like more of an executive role, and then finding out all these things kind of on the way. You know what I mean? Like I feel like a lot of times when you're a musician, right? Like you're just trying stuff at the at the beginning, you're, and you're focused mainly on the music first, right? And then you figure out all these other things, man. So where, where was the past from you from like kind of like moving from just being an artist to like starting to find out these other things that, that you just had no idea about the music, the business side? Yeah. Uh, I, I think for me, you know, my my first sort of like wake up call. Um, i trying to remember what year this was, but essentially like I had a, a placement, a music placement opportunity for like 60K. Um, mm -hmm. for a Verizon commercial. Um, and, you know, the sync industry is one of the, you know, main places that a lot of artists can make good money is by getting into sync, you know? And for me, long story short, I lost out on this opportunity because I didn't, I didn't fully understand that I needed to be my own publishing mm -hmm. to represent my own artist. And so, you know, when it came to presenting the document and the proof, you know, um, I didn't have that. And if you enter sync licensing, that's one of the key things you really have to present is just the paperwork and proof to show that you actually own the music and you actually own all the rights of the music because that side of the business is so cutthroat that no one wants to, you know, place your song in something and, and then to come find out that either you took this sample from somewhere or whatever, right. whatever. And so, you know, word of mouth is not how it goes. It's really the, the documentation and proof. And so that was kind of my big wake up call was to be like, I own the music. Now, how else do I need to show that I own all the shares of, of the music, you know, and that was my big wake up call. And that's kind of when I learned that, oh shit, like as an artist, you also have to be your own publisher to represent yourself. So the publishing is essentially like your master house and your master house has to rep represent you as an artist. And in most cases, you know, a lot of artists, you know, are their own artists, but not a lot actually know that they have to establish their own publishing to administer the the compositions of their work. So that's kind of, that was my big wake up call. And you know, sixty grand, that's a big, that's a big, <laughs> that's a big wake up call, man. That's that's, yeah. that's a big wake up call. That's a payoff. You know, if your student loans wake up call, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so that, yeah, that was my, my, my big lesson. And, and I just had, you know, 
that the opportunity to be like, all right, there's more to this business than just like going to the studio recording and, and putting your music yeah. out. I got to take time to learn the back end and learn everything that I need to know to be able to capitalize on a future opportunity like that. So that's kind of what, what spearheaded the whole learning the back end and the, the um, business side for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, I have a quick question. I mean, we're going to go back a little bit, right? So what, yeah. what really got you into music as a kid growing up? What really inspired you? And you decided, oh, I want to be a musician. I'm just curious, you know? So my parents are both like, my dad's a minister, my mom's su both super heavy involved in the church. And that's kind of where I learned is just always being in that setting. And any anyone that grew up in like a church hold, you know, that's just gospel through it, you know, in and out. And so being in that environment, I just caught the love for just music, instrumentation, and, um, you know, a good time, you know, gospel, gospel environment, right. like a good time. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's kind of like how my passion started is just wanting to, to also be the one holding the mic and singing right. and, you know, realizing, Hey, what's it going to take for me to be the one standing up there and, and singing and bringing this good feeling to this crowd and so forth. And that's kind of how it started for me. Yeah. 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 And now here you are, however many <laughs> <laughs> Plenty, plenty of those opportunities to stand in front of crowds and rock the mic and do your thing, you know, but, and now transition over to the executive thing, you know, I, I think, uh, I'm sure you can attest to it, the, the journey has taken you through a lot and so many ups and downs and rounds and rounds. I think that's just a life of an artist, right? You know, of a musician is just, uh, it all starts with a dream, you know, those aspirations yeah. and then uh you know it, it it transitions into um learning the craft and and, and honing the craft uh, but the most important piece of it which is what most artists miss is the business side yeah. of things and i think that's something yeah. that always excelled at and um have always been uh in tune with which is where i feel a lot of artists lack is and granted a lot of creatives are just creatives right like they're just they just want to create and just do their thing and um, yeah. Most of them are like oddballs and just like, you know, socially awkward. It's just like, yo, I just I don't want to right. create music and, and just be in my basement playing video games. Like, like you know, yeah. Um, right. And that, that's why I think so many artists fail is, 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 is for that reason. Or, um, you know, they don't even get to uh, they don't even get a sufficient start into things is because of of the lack of the business side of things and you know to your point earlier missing out on you know 60k like that's a huge opportunity and um no, any anyone who would who who would not secure that bag would be like hey, yeah what am i doing wrong <laughs> you know, i'm just like man like, that's when you get to you know what i mean that, i just i just hope a bigger bag comes for you that's 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 all i'm saying you know like yeah. get that 60 I'm gonna, I'm gonna need that six figure bag to come your way next. You know that's, but um, I mean, uh, you've 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 seen a lot, done a lot. Um, you've also taught a lot. You know, which is which has been great. Um, for 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 people who are like first getting started, um, like what would you recommend? Like, there's so many like, in regards to monetizing your music and stuff like that. Like, would you recommend, um like registering with PROs, would you recommend opening an LLC? Like what, what would you, what would be your like recommendation to like, as an executive, as someone you're going to take on an artist, like what would be your first, um, your first step in like telling them like what to do in order to like prepare for that next step? Yeah, I would say, you know, registering, re registering with the PRO performance rights organizations, like critical, mm -hmm. you know, um, and the reason why is because one that's like they represent artists and songwriters and producers like that's that's the key thing that they do you know um and so that would be you know one of the first recommendations i will I, I, you know i'll have but before that though you know i think for for let's say anyone that is not registered with the pro is not you know there yet honestly the key thing I would say an artist really needs to do is like work on their brand. Like before even registering with the PRO, work on your brand. Like what do you wanna what do you want to be known as? What do you want to stand for? Like what's what's your brand? What's your product? Because you as an artist, you are the product. Right. You know? Um, 
Um, and so I've, I've come across a lot of artists who are still trying to figure that out. Um, and, and by the time that they finally find out, you know, their identity as an artist, they've put out so much music um, and, you know, the back end is all messy. And so it, it's even harder to go back and correct all those errors because they also cost money, mm -hmm. you know? And so, so I would recommend for someone to truly work on like their branding first, because to be, to be honest with you, like if that's solid, so many opportunities are going to come your way yeah. um, in, in ways that you don't know from like, even just doing an open mic, you never know who's going to be in the audience to resonate with your brand that they're going to want to collaborate with you. Yeah. You know, like, you right. know, like you, you all know me and like, I don't, I don't go out and do shows anymore, but I get cool shows to do shows for like nonprofits and, you know, partners that align with some of the certain music that I have, because those songs are like particular to my brand, you know, and one show at those like nonprofits and those agencies opens so much doors for me that I don't have to be at the mission ballrooms or I don't have to be at the Red Rocks and so forth to like build meaning for my brand and for my artistry, you know? And so like, I would recommend artists to like really do that first and build your story, build who you are before even registering in the PROs and stuff. Because once you have that, everything else comes easy, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and you don't have to go back in and work on redefining your brand or like updating your brand and, and all of that. And so that's what I would, I would, the advice I would give for, for people starting out. Because even some of my artists that I'm working with right now, we're, we're still working on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, like to your point, like I think me personally, Personally, I'm still working on that, still yeah. building my brand. And, 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 right. and what, like, uh, this is something that has taken place for many years. And yeah. uh, to your point, I think a lot of artists, especially like early on when they're able to establish their identities and, and their brands and stuff like that and just continue to build from it, mm -hmm. the exponential growth that they experience is, is, is wild. You know, yeah. and um, to your point, like you said yeah. earlier, with some opportunities becoming available, People identify like when they don't have to like guess what it is that you're trying to accomplish or trying to put out or mm -hmm. um, what exactly like you're trying to present to them. Mm -hmm. um, they can just take it or leave yeah. it. And, and for okay. those and, 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 and the people who take it, like, you know, it doesn't have to be a lot of people. It can be we always talk about the thousand super fans and what what that what you're able to build with like a fan base like that. Mm -hmm. But when people identify with somebody and they can relate mm -hmm. to it, it's just like, OK, I'm latch on yeah. to this and so the you you minimize like all the second guessing and right. like all the, right. the the confusion of like okay what is are they trying to be hip-hop are they trying to be rb are they trying to be pop edm like you know all this stuff are they trying to be you know goth are they trying to be <laughs> god like it's just like like you know there's all these like questions and what people specifically fans want to do the most it sounds bad but like people want to be able to label you, right? Like yeah. they they be able to like put you into a particular box. Like okay, like I know that they fit this, mm -hmm. and I like that, so I'm gonna like run with that. And the sooner that you realize that as an artist, I think the the sooner that you can capitalize and move forward and and, and continue to grow your fan base and stuff like that. And um, like I said, for myself specifically, that's something that I've struggled with over the years of like how exactly I want to be identified mm -hmm. as a DJ or an artist, whatever the, like, all those facets and what that looks yeah. like. Um, so I, that that resonates with me a lot, you know, and, and I'm sure it resonates with a lot of people. It's just, mm -hmm. like, being able to create your brand, create be, creating your identity and what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's huge, you know, and I, I remember during the pandemic, you know, one of my artists, we, you know, we were essentially pitching for Rock Nation and Warner and, um, you know, one of the one of the execs, uh, Ray Daniels, is like, what, what's your story? What's her story? Mm -hmm. You know, like, um, and then he was like, I'm going to give you guys a week. I want you to write 25 songs. And I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, like, I, I, I got a job. <laughs> like, I, ain't got, <laughs> I, I got time like that to go write 25 songs. But, like, what he was trying to prove and, you know, what he was trying to say is that, like, as an artist, like, what's your story? Am mm -hmm. I going to be able to listen to all these 25 songs and like be able to tell that like you've been through some shit. Like I listen to this and I can tell like your development as an artist. I can tell your story. I can, you know, 
feel like, oh man, this is something, this is someone that I want to hear more music from because you're telling me something that I haven't heard before. You're telling me something that's captivating, that's interesting, right? And at the core of it, it's like who you are. That's your brand, right, right. you know? And like that shit always stood out to me as as like, like as an artist, you know, like I look at someone like catalogs and I just wrote music because it, ideally, like I wanted to prove that I could write to anything, mm-hmm. you know, but if you were to look at those songs and, and, and see like, does it tell you who I am? And it, does it tell you like what my brand is? To some degree, yes, but holistically, no, wow. you know? And so the music that I have yet to release is actually like a good picture of my identity and who I am and what I value musically. But his, his like, um, essentially his request, you know, and kind of like the whole idea and, and challenge for us was, it, it, was, it, was, it was like something that, that resonated and always till this day stands out to me as, okay, so this is what the big, the big dogs really wanna, wanna see. You know, they wanna see an artist who, you know, if they're right. signed or they come to the table has like books and books and books of music that, you know, is a good sign of like who they are, what their brand is, what they stand for, what they care about, what they think about emotionally what they're all about like it was it was a, a transformative moment for for myself and my artist well that hits so, so yeah. that hits a lot of things when you when you was hitting that bro um like i was listening to that and it, it makes so much more sense like nowadays with the current state of music right like back then i guess you know you would just maybe just get signed to a label yeah. and then you know you could have like a mysterious kind of vibe and yeah. you know what i mean people just like yeah. whatever you kind of put out because it was like pushed to them like by the radio but i feel yeah. like now we're in like an independent stage where mm-hmm. like there's a bunch of artists that have large independent followings yep. right right but yeah. those followings really connect with the yeah. person right mm-hmm. like really really connect with them they feel like they know them they feel like it's uh, like i you know one of my favorite new ones is la russell mm-hmm. I, yeah. you you know what I mean? I, I don't listen to a bunch of his music, man, but I just love like what he's doing so much that I feel like that's the bro. Like I feel like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know, I feel like I adapt him before. <laughs> like, I feel like that's my guy. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And I feel like 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 fan bases want to feel like that when they connect with an art- artist, especially nowadays. They right. want to feel like that. So like you understanding your own brand mm-hmm. can really help somebody else understand how they can connect with you and, and understanding your brand is sometimes it's just understanding yourself like who are you yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. and when you can define that and then you know express that in your music i feel like a a, a large fan base or not even even doesn't have to be large but just a fan base can develop around that mm-hmm. and then on the other side of that like getting into exec roles right it's for somebody who knows what their brand is now you know how to market it mm-hmm. because this yeah. is the, this is the demographic for what you do you know what i mean so yeah. we can target them directly you know what i mean so it's just yeah. important to have that brand for so many reasons bro yeah, yeah. And, and, and to your point p we're in the age of like accessibility where things are just like there is an overabundance yeah. of everything you know there's an abundance of artists there's uh really just an overabundance of everything and so that being said in the old days of like artist development and yeah. stuff like that that's no longer a thing like labels are not seeking to develop artists anymore like you know right. they want to market people who already know what their market is mm-hmm. you know they want they like they want to identify with people who already know what their identity is it's cool like cool we can take this and we we can we can uh scale it mm-hmm. you know we talk right. about ability all the time like okay cool you have a thousand fans like who are loyal to you we can up that to now a million fans mm-hmm. and like you know, like let's let's take this what whatever it is that you're doing and let's run with it and labels and i'm not just talking about labels um companies you know like you talk about sync opportunities and stuff like that like you know, those those people all yeah view that like they, they they see artists like that and they salivate like they're just sitting there like just just drooling <laughs> know that we can like capitalize off of this you know kind of thing so to that point artist development is out the window now you know like you have to be able to present something as a musician as a creative you know and and you already have to know what that is so that you can bring it to the table and use it as leverage it's like cool i don't necessarily need you like la russell prime example la russell yeah. doesn't need a record label like you know and 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 i don't think he ever will sign um the only thing i like 
realistically, I could see La Russell signing a distribution deal. I don't think he would ever sign a record deal, um, but I could see him signing a distribution deal um, just to scale is essentially what he's doing, right? You know, because he already knows who his audience is. He's like, hey, I have 10,000 loyal fans who will buy everything that I put out, regardless right. if it's merch, if it's a project, um, you know, whatever it is. So he can use that as leverage. And it's like, well, what do you really have to like offer me here? You know, so um, yeah, I, I, I think just to that point, artist development is no longer a thing that's a thing of the past. And, and nowadays you just have to be able to bring so much to the table because there is such an overabundance of everything, of people and stuff like that. You have to know who you are. You have to know what you bring to the table and you have to be able to leverage that. Right. I don't, I don't, necess I don't necessarily think artist development is not a thing anymore. I think artist development is just shifted. You know, mm -hmm. I th think artist development still exists to some to some degree. Right. Um, you know, and and there there's a few artists right now that I can think of. You know, who are, have been signed recently through the pandemic, got discovered, and you know, some of the things that I'm noticing is that they're not necessarily being developed because you know the, the artists themselves know who they are, but with where we are with technology and, and, you know, everything and just different ways that you can reach the mass, you know, what labels can do is they can place you in the right audience, right? right? And elevate your, your development, elevate your trajectory at a pace that you maybe couldn't have done yourself. You know, like when I think about La Russell, you know, one of the things that I think about is like, first of all, it's, it's exa exhausting running things by yourself, Yeah, you know? Thanks. And so, that's 100%. If you, can, if you can place yourself in a deal, that's actually also in your favor and builds upon what you've already done. I don't see any artist who wouldn't sign up for that when you have, mm -hmm. you know, a team that can elevate and actually catapult, catapult what you're already doing, you know? And so I think what, what we're going to see and what we're seeing more is that artists who are smart and doing the things themselves are placing themselves in a situation right where they're going to make deals that's more in their favor mm -hmm. where in the past labels mm -hmm. did deals that was in their favor because they knew they had to develop you so i don't right. think artist development is essentially gone i think we're just going to see a reframing of that development right. no. No, thanks no i can definitely see that yeah, yeah. You know, because I mean, think about all of us, like if we get a deal, you know, or we're approached by a label, we're not going to say no, if anything, we're going to make sure it's in our favor, right? Because we know what we're good at, you know, we know mm -hmm. what we can do, we know what we can do. Right. Um, and if anything, at the negotiation table, I'm sure we're all going to show up differently. Because some of the packages that in the past that a label would provide, we probably don't need because we don't give a fuck mm -hmm. about it. Right. Right? You know what I'm saying? And yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah. Our, our our mindset and our values are just going to be different. So I don't think again that like development is just completely gone. I think how the labels used to do it, right. it's not what's needed mm -hmm. anymore. Right. So Makes my, sense. My, my question though, how how hard was that transition? Because at one point you mentioned, oh, I was an artist, and now you went now you're doing fully um being a um, publisher, right? How hard was that transition from an artist to a full time exec? Um. It it would it took time, you know. I think some of y'all know. Like I took I took a break, like from the music industry, and I just educated myself from going to conferences to right. meeting execs, asking questions. You know, even if it was like just one question, it it took me. How you know I spent however much to go to that conference and just get this one question answered and build that network. You know, I did it, and that was that was the hard part. The hard part was like <laughs> the learning. The easy right. part, the easy part was making the switch because at that point I just had all the knowledge. I knew what I needed to know. You know, the hard part was just learning because during that phase you realize, oh shit, I've been doing this wrong, or right. you know, I need to change this this um, DBA for my music, or I have to update all my split sheets because now I need to align it in this certain direction and all that. And that was the right. hard part is learning along the way but the easy part was you know actually doing the switch once i knew everything else because once you know where you need to register so like song trust um making sure your pro is all actually accurate to all right. the music making sure your information with spotify and all of that's actually accurate you know all of that mm -hmm. stuff is super easy because at that point then you really focus on the marketing and making sure you're marketing your product because 
your yeah. record blows today, you don't have to worry about if your music is registered correctly or registered in all the right places. You can just worry about is my money coming in? Is the money coming in? Is, is, is it accurate? Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so, yeah, the hard part is just investing in the learning, you know, just like anything else. When, when, right. when you're in that, in that journey of learning how to like grow your money or right. you know, how to grow your investments and all of that, that's the hard part is investing right. the time to learn. But like, once you have that knowledge, the easy, the easy part is actually like the execution. Yeah. Right. And, and that's where awesome. a lot of artists struggle is just like, we have to exist, right? We still have to make a living. We still have to pay bills. We still have responsibilities. Yeah. And I think that a lot of artists are torn because it's just like, I don't necessarily want to work a job. I don't think most yeah. people want to work a job. I mean, if we're being completely honest, yeah, you only show up because you get a paycheck, yeah. you know, every two, however frequently you get paid. But for creatives and music, musicians specifically, I think that's where they struggle the most is just like okay how do i figure out how to manage my time and how do i monetize in, in um my music and my art and set up streams of income outside of uh relying whole, so solely on music because if you rely on streams you're not going to do anything unless, mm -hmm. unless unless you're like literally generating millions of streams you know yeah. for music so i I, th I think where would you tell an artist to start as far as like monetizing their art or like you know like something like that like where would you tell them to start would you tell them to start with merch you know would you tell them to open an llc to even begin with so that you can start writing things out like like where would you tell them to start if they're like hey how do i monetize my art i i think the first first advice i would give is like every artist should look like one song mm -hmm. you know like one, one song that you have look at the one song and then for that one one song go through like you know what I call like a journey mapping or a process mapping of like all right in this one song what are all the ways that I need to show ownership of this song right PRO registering with your PRO registering the music with your PRO you know starting there and then from there it's like all right publishing to be a publisher you have to have an LLC because publishing has to be attached to an LLC before you can even register as a publisher mm -hmm. right and so then doing that publishing, registering whatever publishing you want to register to like actually manage the publishing of the song. And then going from there, from there, then you will learn, all right, I got to create a song trust or I got to look into the MLC, you know, the Mechanical Licensing Collective, um, the Harry Fox Agency. There's all these other places, right? You have to start connecting the dots in terms of like, all right, all these organizations are on there. How do I make sure that they all tie to the one, this one song or this one song was registered in all the right places. From there, I would say, you know, the branding for the song itself is super important. And so what is this song about? You know, well, how would I create a music video that will tell the story of this one song, right? So once you do that, then you have the film festivals, which a lot of artists still don't tap into. You know, I think to this day, I'm probably the only artist in Colorado who's had a music video stream and won laurels at five film festivals. I don't know anyone who's done that, right? But that's a, a lane that I learned. <laughs> that's, a, that's, 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 a lane, that's a lane that I learned. And I once I got into that space, I was like, holy shit, like this is a whole world that people don't know about for music videos, right? And that's, that's a whole world even in itself, like to even have a music video premiere at the Sundance Film Festival, which is like part of my bucket list now, is how do I get a music video to screen at the Sundance Film Festival? Yeah. People don't know that, but you can actually do that. You can actually pitch your music for that whole entire music video category that exists in that world that people don't know. So like, that's a whole brand within itself. So gem, I would recommend, right. So I would recommend that, you know, um, and, and, and from there, when it comes to monetizing, sync licensing is the best way to, yeah. to really monetize your music. Like to be able to place a song in TV, commercial, video games, even, that's one of the best ways to, to monetize because like, you know, similar to how I lost out on that 60K, like the budgets for some of these projects are ridiculous. And the, the amount set for music will blow your mind when you figure out, holy shit, they have a million to just license yep. music, right? And, and they can literally also give that million to like five people. You are. spread out that million between five people if, if those five artists have like a collective of records that like 
the supervisors love you just never know you know and so like that's one of the easiest ways that you can actually like make real money and and be able to you know actually fund everything else that you want to do with your career and so film i always talk about people learning and investing their time to learn about sync licensing and that whole entire world mm -hmm. you know outside of that i think merch is great merch is a great place but like with merch you have to have a merch that like builds a brand you know right. like chance the rappers mm -hmm. chance the rappers has shown us he's one of the great artists that has shown us like what that could really look like with this just this simple like hat you know, the three, um, yeah, I right, yeah. yeah, I don't even know how much money he's made with that particular brand, creating all the different colors and all that. But I bet you it was a lot of money, you know, from right. that simple thing. And that's part of his brand, you know. And so I think there's when it comes to monetizing, there's just so many ways you artists can go about to do it. It's just more about do I have the right documentation? So when doors open, I can actually capitalize on the revenue and the opportunity that's going to come my way. And I think that's where a lot of artists make mistakes like I did my my first time when I lost out on that Verizon opportunity. Mm -hmm. and, and not even just the right documentation. It's something that we talk about all the time yeah. uh, is having the right systems in place. Right. Yeah. So let's let's say you do create a brand and you do have merch that people love. They're like, oh, I'm wearing this when I saw your performance at this right. festival. Right. I want that shirt or I want yeah. that. And then all of a sudden they go to your website and you don't have any of your merch available and stuff like yeah. that. So I can he says having the systems available and that's something I that even and I have been focused on. A website. You know? Like you yeah. like, let's start have, there. Like you know have, what can have, they even find you? You know what I mean? And I'm not saying you have to have, you know, like like there's other, other alternatives that you can go about and sell your merchandise. Like you can set up, you know, uh a you, you can have a link tree that right. and, and mm -hmm. from there you can go find your merch, you know, but just a, a sole place where people can go and find anything that's relevant to you mm -hmm. and, and it should all be in a hub like you know yeah. somewhere whether that site whether that be a link tree whatever yeah. that you know like somewhere some kind of landing page where like it's just like okay all things dj zenith all things ramond all things mawule okay i can find it here right. you know, cool. yeah and that's where i th think a lot of people fail too a lot of artists specifically is not having the right system set up in place like not even just the right doc documentation but the right systems too and i think that's that's important to not overlook um and and getting that uh optimized mm -hmm. prior to you know like making things readily available you know because the last thing that you want to do is have something that everybody loves and they can't find it you know kind of thing yeah. so I, wow. I think it was having the right systems in place one one of the other things i'll share too i think you know a lot a lot what i've noticed what a, a lot of artists would do is like people are everywhere mm -hmm. which is which is important like you want to be everywhere but when it comes to monetizing you know it's like what what lane do you want to focus on you know if it's sync licensing right you have to know that it's a journey to actually thrive in the sync licensing and so investing your time into that space to learn to grow to connect all of that right when it comes to like for example like film festivals that's also a lane mm -hmm. that can actually generate revenue for you because some of these film festivals, if you actually win the award, there's money associated to the, mm. to the, to the winning, you know? And so like, that's a whole world that like you can invest your time and energy to say, I want to build my brand and I want to build my, my trajectory through this one lane. Right. But if someone was doing both at the same time, especially if you don't have a team and you're independent, right. it can be exhausting. Right. And so I think, the the key advice I, I would give people is like be strategic right. be strategic with, with how you're you're moving your business right it's like where where are you getting most attraction right and that's where you want to focus your 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 attention because that lane is going to open more doors for you you right. know and i'm going to drop one gem right here is the like film freeway so film free as in f-r-e-e -E and way w-a-r filmfreeway.com a lot of people don't know about about that site but that's a site that every film festival that is happening you can create your account in film freeway and see what your options are to pitch music videos or if you turn your music video into actually like a, a cool movie series or whatever now you got a, a, a different product that you can pitch right. and try to yeah. win laurels and things like that you know and for me like i won the best music film festival at the dc film festival back in i think 2000 17 or 18 and since then 
like I, I wasn't even there. My creative director who directed my video was the one that was there. So she won the mm. award, right? And I'm mm. like, sit, I'm sitting in my office, bro. <laughs> like sit in my office and I'm getting people reach out to me like, yo, I just saw your music video. Want to work with you. Want to use this song for this, blah, 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 blah. You know, and I wasn't even there, you know? Right. But the fact that that was a lane that I pursued and I still pursue, it opened so many doors for me that has built so many networks and connections for me, right. you know? And I think that's what people just can't eliminate with your grind is that if you truly focus your attention and the path in a direction, there are people there who are just waiting for you, right? waiting to discover you. It doesn't have to be on a TikTok or whatever. It can be all these different lanes right. that can open doors for you. So what I always tell my artists is like, yo, where do we want to focus our attention? Mm -hmm. Because right. w w where we decide we're going to focus our attention is going to determine the level of effort and the yeah. level of pre-work. And, you know, I would say pre-game, just like you're about to go to a party. Yeah. You got to pre-game or whatever. You yeah. know? Like yeah. where you decide to focus your attention is going to determine the level you have to pre-game right. to set yourself up to be successful in that in that yeah. lane. And, and to your point, E.B., I, I, I think when you talk about effort and where to focus your efforts, I think in today's age, you can't ignore social media. Yeah. Like you have, you have to lean into social media as any kind of creative, but specifically as a musician. Right. I know myself personally, I, I can attest to, I don't like social media. I don't think <laughs> social media. I've told EB this so many times. <laughs> like I do not. Like social, if it wasn't for being a creative and being yeah. a music, being a DJ and stuff, I would not be on social media. Like I, I would, I would, I would, that thing, like I would, <laughs> I would probably deactivate all my accounts and just be right. off or just like chilling on an island somewhere, yeah. you know, like that would be my ideal world. But the reality of it is social media is something that is just so prevalent in today's age, right. yeah. you know, uh, kids have social media accounts and stuff like that. And that's like, they're growing up on social media and stuff like that. So you can't ignore it. Like for, I, I get like, for instance, sync licensing and stuff like that. Like you can lean into that stuff and whatnot, but like social media nowadays, as we talked about this on a previous episode, your social media is like your resume. Yeah. The first thing that people are going to ask for, what's your Instagram, yeah. you know, like, that's that's the first thing that they're gonna ask for. They're not even gonna ask you for your website. They're gonna ask you for your Instagram. Like, what is your Instagram? Because right. that is your nowadays. So, if 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 you have all these sync placements and stuff yeah. like that, like you go on you go on Instagram and it's just like you like are, do you, like the last time you posted was like 2017. Like, are you even like like do you exist? Like, like what, what what is this? And so, I think you still have to be relevant to a degree now, unless like you've achieved some mass success, yeah. like. Yeah. Artists like the Kendricks and the J. Coles and the Jay Z's, none of them have social medias. And if they do, they post like maybe like once every two months because they don't care and they, they have the ability to not care. Right. You know what? Sitting on millions of dollars. So it's just like, right. I, I don't have to care. But for someone who's like up and coming right. and trying to assess themselves and whatnot, you have to have a resume and your resume is going to be your social media. So I think that's something that people, especially creatives, like I said, creatives you have to lean into social media and and as much as we don't like it you just have to use it as a tool for your success at that day like you have to use it as leverage um and it doesn't have to be the most enjoyable process but what i've come to learn is that like the more optimal that my social media becomes the the more i enjoy it. like you know like like cool like I don't have to sit here and scroll for hours and hours on right. TikTok and Instagram. So I get on, I post, I might scroll for about two minutes and then I'm off. Cause I'm like, all right, right. cool. I got to get out of this world. I can't, I can't get wrapped up <laughs> here, too much. Here, so you just said something that I, that, that's that been making me think because you know, I'm, I'm mentoring two artists right now. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of times when we discuss, we discuss like what's working, what's not working, what they're noticing, what they're not noticing. Um, and, um, you know, one particular artist, since we started working together, you know, her, her TikTok is, has been growing and I love the trajectory in which it's building, you know, when you talked about optimizing right. mm -hmm. the, the things that I like to think about when I think about music nowadays, you know, like there's some artists that I've consulted and, you know, I've given advice and, you know, people at the end of the day, people will do what they want to do. Right. right? Yeah. And so there's a particular artist who I see like releasing music very, very often, putting in work for music videos, all of that, right? 
But one thing that I noticed that the audience is just not there. Yeah. And the audience that is there, they're not in, interacting in a way that generates them, you know, the the revenue right. or the turnaround that's necessary, right? But when but on social media, they're posting every day, they're engaging every day, you know, they're going to the studio, they're recording, they're doing all of that, you know. And then there's an artist that I actually even I'm, I'm, I've been recently connected to and truly admire. She has a really good song, really, really good song, right? And like her songs, like as like initially when I heard it, I thought it was a Snow Allegra song. Like that's how good this record oh, wow. is, right? And what I love about this one artist is that she sees the potential in this one right. record. And what she's do doing is that every post, like when you go to her TikTok, and I'll send you her page so you guys can can check it out. When you go to her TikTok, every video is on this one song. Mm -hmm. But the mm. creative thing that she's doing is like, she has a picture of her in the studio with a song on there and a caption. She has a video where she's like reworking the song and showing you how she made it. She has a video where she's talking about the song, but in each and every single video that she has on this TikTok, it's literally the same record. Mm -hmm. yeah. and the record is that good that people don't get bored. Right. People mm -hmm. actually congratulate her. People cheer her on. People want to see this record be successful. Right. Mm -hmm. Because what she's doing is that she's bringing her audience into her journey, her difficulty, the, yeah. into this one record, right? And every month and every week, I'm like going to her TikTok and I'm watching that record skyrocket mm -hmm. because every time she's introducing people to a new element of the song right. that people are then going back to her Spotify. And, you know, like if you can watch, if, so I reached out to her one time and I was like, hey, do you have a team supporting you? Because I'm, I'm I, like, now she's caught my attention. If I was a label yeah. exec, I would fucking say right. Because I'm like, that's this is an artist that has potential. This is an artist that knows how to work in music. This is an artist that knows how to market a song. This is yeah. an artist that knows her value, you know? Right. And so then I reached out to her and she's like, yeah, I have a team. Here's what we're working on, all of this shit. And, and at that point, I'm like, you've made me into a fan. Because I want you to be successful. Because yeah. right. I see right. how talented you are. And I see how well you're grinding, you know? And so... The thing to, to what you said, Z, is like, when it comes to optimization, it's like, when you look at the spectrum, what end of the spectrum do you want to be on when it comes to opt optimization? Mm -hmm. Do you want to be on the spectrum where you're growing your audience, you're work workshopping a song that you believe right. in, that you know is good? Or do you want to be the other artist that's going to the studio every day, like recording every song, just hoping that this song is the one that's going to that's gonna blow up? Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so like, I think... To, to what I said before, in terms of people putting attention, it's like, yeah, optimizing, there's different ways that you can optimize, but how are you gonna, how, what lane are you gonna travel? Knowing that in each lane, your journey is gonna look different right. and your outcome is gonna look different, but what, where do you wanna focus that attention, you know? But yeah, when I watch her, like I send her page to both of my artists, I'm like, yo, yeah. When I, when I give you advice, when I say certain things, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Right. Yeah. Because this could be the outcome that you also yeah. have. Yeah. There's, there's two points I, I want to make in regards to that. Right. Shout out to whoever this artist is, because she's doing something that most artists don't do. And me and right. Pee Wee actually recently talked about this. Most artists don't know how to promote a song and how to continuously promote it. Yeah. Like. Right. We, we get into the habit of making a song and we post it once and then it's just like, all right, cool. All right next one. <laughs> it's like, I want the next one. I, I, put, I put all this effort into this song. I, I, I produced it, wrote it, recorded it, you know, mixed it, mastered it, and all this stuff and have listened to it thousands of times and I posted it once and was just like, okay, cool. I'm on to the next song. That's what most artists fall into the trap of. Artists like La Russell, you know, like like Russ, um, oh, yeah. all these artists, like all these independent um, artists who have have thrived, they talk about it all the time. Is to your, to the two points is you have to continuously keep promoting right. yourself right. and promoting that song. You can't just post it once. You have to figure out ways to come up with different content for the same song. You can literally make thirty pieces of content for the same right, right. song. Uh, and introducing it to people in a different way each and every time, yep. you know, kind of thing. And so yep. you have to figure out how to do that. But also, to your point, you still have to continue to be consistent. You can still right. keep putting out new music. Right. But once you find that song that does stick, she found her song that sticks, 
keep promoting that song. It's it's not right. like you just like okay, cool. Like I did like I pushed out this song. It did really well. Now I'm gonna co go ahead and continue to release this music and just right. focus on this. Yeah. You still focus on dropping new content because people still like the thing that people don't want to do is when they land on your Spotify Spotify page and they see only that one song that they like. It's like cool, like. But how many times can I listen to this one song? You right. know, like, like typically like to like latch on to a little bit. It takes it takes one song to get somebody's attention, but I think it takes multiple songs to to really gain a fan. Like where it's just like okay, right. cool. I think anybody can strike lightning right. like one. Like you right. know, like right. you know. But in order to gain like a super fan, I think you have to keep pe pe keep people engaged, and right. either either that's through your Spotify page or like through your consistent content, right. or that's social media right. you know like it's like if you're not continuing to drop music then how else are you going to keep people engaged are you continuing to engage people on social media and stuff like that so i think it's killing the two birds with one stone it's 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 leveraging one right. really good content yeah. um, and and building an entire campaign an entire um social media uh strategy around that song but also being like continuing to be consistent and still putting out more content um and and but still continuing to promote that same song like right. for instance, like uh eb you put me on to effective exposure shout out to effective exposure if no one knows um i, I think it's important to work with agencies and stuff like that because sometimes you can only do so much we talk about it all the time you get burnt out one thing i hate doing i i i, I did it for a while and i was pretty good at it was running ads for myself especially right. facebook ads. And and Evie and I talked about this. Shout out to Facebook. <laughs> they blocked my ass for the longest time. I hate Facebook. <laughs> why why did block you? Yeah, I still don't know to this day. They even, I wanna, okay, quick we're gonna we're gonna get into this side story. Right. Facebook blocked me. They blocked my account. Fast forward like a year and a half later, they unblocked me and they were like, Yeah, sorry, we like we blocked you for no apparent reason. And I'm just like, that's what I've been trying to tell y'all for like the last year and a half. So because of me getting blocked, I had to figure out other resources to promote my music, right? So that's when E B put me on to Effective Exposure. They're an agency who you can uh collaborate with and they, they they'll run ads for you, you know, kind of thing. So because of my situation ways with being blocked we had to like go th jump through a lot of hoops in order to figure out how to promote my music without like them getting blocked because like if you're promoting content from yeah. some from, like a user that's been blocked you can potentially get blocked yeah. too so we had to jump right. a lot of a lot of loopholes you know but thankfully i'm no longer <laughs> blocked so I, facebook thank you for getting it right but y'all still suck <laughs> <laughs> No, that, that's 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 I'm, that's interesting though. What what I have learned from the entire conversation, because when it comes to music, you guys are more knowledgeable about music yeah. than I am. But mm -hmm. what I have learned is like, because before I was just I thought you know you just just an artist, right? You're just an artist. But now I'm thinking that you have to be. It's like a business. You have to make sure that every other department is running well in order for you to that's be successful, fact. right? So that's what I'm learning. Because before it's like you know, oh, he's just an artist. But now you need to, like what Mawali said, marketing, PR, all the all the things has to be good you got to find ways to like be able to get yourself out there Zen like you said zenith being on social media way people can come in you know look yeah. at your music spotify is crazy bro like at the end of the day it's like a business you have to treat it as a business and make sure every department is are successful in order for you to be successful when it comes to music absolutely like you have to wear so many hats so like that's to that point to eb's point that's why you, it's important to have a team because like right. when you do so much by yourself you're gonna get burnt out exhausted yeah. Exhaustion yeah. happens. Like if you're going yeah. out at some point, so you got to delegate at some point. Um, now, a, a matter of when to delegate, that's that's always like up in the air. That's all subjective, you know, kind of thing. But like, you have to wear so many different hats. You're not just right. a, you're an uh, you're an artist manager. You know, you're responsible for your own bookings. Right. You know, like a creative director. You're the one putting all you know putting together all like your social media content and drafting up. Uh, <laughs> It's and stuff like that, like on your music and all this stuff. You're a tour manager because <clears throat> like, you know, like where I'm going to play next and stuff like that. There's all these different hats that you're wearing and right. at some point you're going to get gas. So like, you know, like. Is that why it's easier? Most people sign to label them being independent. Absolutely. They don't have to do sure. all that. That's exactly. You know? Sometimes exactly right. Like over, yeah. right. Is that why? And that's why most people, that's why most artists sign shitty deals is because mm -hmm. they're just like, yo, 
I just want to make music and then like y'all do the rest. Right. And that's why they end up getting screwed out of so much money because it's just like they kind of hand over the reins and the label. Now, granted, from the business, from a business perspective, the label's doing a lot too, though. Like, right. like, like right. they are still doing a lot. If all you're doing is, is creating the music, they're doing everything else, right. which is why a lot of these artists get get caught up in get wrapped up in deals that are not favorable and, and um to them in in any regard you know but also like to that point like the label is still responsible for do, doing a lot of the grunt right. work like like you may be making the music but it's our responsibility to make money off of this and best believe they're going to recoup right. their money before you would see anything so you know um that's the reason why most people sign deals a prime example um a lot of african artists with kid with kid was a 360 deal you know like his first deal was a 360 deal a lot like i i can only imagine like imagine growing up in the slums right. and stuff like that in in nigeria and lagos and then then like all of a sudden this label's like hey like we can we can grant you access to all of this and he's like yeah where the fuck right. do I you know like, like like you can you can get me out the slums and i could go make music and do whatever the fuck i want to great right but <laughs> what they don't realize is that like you know on the back end of that thing yeah. right Let's say the label makes seven million dollars off of Wiz Kid, and he only sees, you know, five hundred thousand dollars. This is like, wait, I got five hundred thousand. Right. Y'all got six point five million dollars. How does this right. work out? You know, kind of. It's because of your deal. You know, like right. they get, they they reap off of everything that you sow. You know, right. like whether it be your music, right. whether it be, um, you know, um, any any kind of sync deals, all, all that stuff. Anything they they can they can leech off of all of that stuff, and so. That now what about as an aspiring artist, right? Let's say you from the hood, you don't have that knowledge, you don't have people around you to guide you. Then how do you go about making that right decision to make sure if the right label is gonna look after you? Like how do you go and yeah. navigate? What what advice then are you guys who are like are not a lot knowledgeable then? What advice can you get that young artist who trying to like I, I got I'ma just I'ma just throw one piece in here, man, because that that's actually what happens, Diamond. I mean, like that's that's actually that's exactly what happens. Is they don't know what to do. Right. They don't know who to talk to. You know what I mean? They ain't got the money, and and they're like, you, you it's, it's start, they be starving. People be hurting out here. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So they they need it. You know, my my first piece of advice is is I heard this I heard this thing the one time that said the best time to buy a car is when you don't need one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but what that what's that saying? It what's what's that, when that saying is is don't try to jump into a situation mm. just because you need it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You know what I mean? And let, unless you're cool with whatever comes with the back end, right? right? If you right. if you need it bad enough to take care of your family right now, just right. know that on the back end it's probably gonna look ugly. Yeah. Just yeah. know that. Yeah. But if you can string it out and and you know and take some time, then we have so much pieces of knowledge online now that right. you know what I mean. Back then you might have just needed a lawyer. Right. You could probably hop on TikTok and say like what what to look for in in bad label deals and there's probably like a hundred videos that'll come up just kind of like right. walking you through it so take i would say just take that time to just educate yourself a little bit and just know what you're actually signing right, yeah. true. you know what i mean don't just just look at the number or you know what i mean what they say they can do for you just see if you can try to understand what you know right. what you're signing and if you could have somebody that that you do know that comes in and can explain that to you that'll yeah. change the whole situation for you on the back end man and two two things for for that like there is the, the 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 crazy thing about that is with a lot of these labels when they present you with a deal they coerce you into it because they're like well this is only available for like the right. next four hours so we need like a decision like that yeah, so, like, yeah, that's the thing about it is it's just like you know <laughs> want to go and do your research and all this stuff it's just like man I, let me call me like hey can you google this like and all that stuff is just like right. you know, it's when you, when we walk out of this out of this room the deal is off the table you know kind of thing so the next point is i don't think there's any right or wrong answer you know right. like I think it's all subjective right you know we could talk like we can use WizKid as an example his first deal was trash but like look at where it's gotten him to this right. point you know, like even though he initially signed a 360 deal, he's still one of the like biggest international Afrobeat artists like today. Right, to the day. Yeah, yeah. Like true. even though his initial deal wasn't favorable, he's no longer in that deal. And like you could say that 
Yeah, his first deal wasn't favorable, but like he got out of the sums. He's able to take care of his family. You know, let's say he only got 15% of everything that he was seeing from his first deal. Right. Let's say 15% translates into like $700,000. That's still $700,000 more than what he had, you right. know, two years right. ago kind of thing. So like, there's no right or wrong answer, right? Like some people are willing to, to peace point, you just got to be willing to accept whatever comes on the back end of that. And more, more than likely, it's not going to be favorable. But yeah. you all understand that too. Like, I'm changing my entire life circumstances right. because now I am able to take care of my family and I'm right. able to go and travel and do music and do the thing that I love that I'm so passionate about. But the, 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 the downside of that too is like you're almost like a pawn, right? Like, right. Because you have to do whatever they tell you to do yeah, you know yeah. like like you yeah. have to go and perform on this if you don't want to go on tour okay cool you got to figure out how to recoup you got to make all, all this money that we like put up front you got to pay us back right. so like what are you gonna do all right you, you better take your ass on tour then because like yeah. you know how are you gonna pay back all this money you know so that's the only there, there, there's pros and cons to everything right and i don't right. think that's the right or wrong answer it's just you got to be willing to like you know swallow like like you know um, you just got to be willing to put up whatever comes on the back end of that, and that's okay, you know. So I don't think there is any right or wrong answer, but it's just a matter of what you're willing to do. So would you say there's a lot of uh, exploitation then to take advantage of the artist for, for the most part then? I think everybody yeah, it, it, it doesn't, I think it doesn't, it doesn't the, seem like a fair trade to me, like how you guys explain it, right? It's not. It's, the labels are. it's not. Well, let me... <laughs> Let me explain a qu something quick to you, Diamond. I heard that I heard the, the best way I ever understood this, right? Is the biggest artists usually have bad deals, and this is why, right? If you was a label, right, you'd want to promote the artist that has a bad deal, right? Yeah. That makes sense for you. That makes if I'm the label, like let's say this, Diamond, you're the artist, I'm the label. Right. I give you five percent. Right. You get you get I I'm, I'm taking ninety-five, right. you get five percent. Right. I also sign Z. Right. You know what I mean? He's taking eighty percent, and I'm taking right. twenty of him. I want right. you to blow up. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I get ninety five percent of everything you do, so it right. makes more sense for me to, you know what I mean, to right. make you the bigger artist right. then because first, I get a bigger piece of what you do. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Right. So, like, Crazy. honestly, it, it it makes sense for the biggest artists to have bad deals, yep. and that's why right. you see those, you know, the new edition stories, the TLC right. story. It happens right. a lot of times, is because in the beginning, you know, it's all good, and then. On the back end, they like, well, what, you know, what, where's all this money going? And it's like, well, right. it's in, it's in the contract. You know what I'm saying? Nothing so, can do about it. Yeah. Signature over there. No, nah, it's it's usually not favorable, and that's why you see this wave of like independent artists because they're right. understanding that they're right. becoming a little more literate. Right. Um, the knowledge is out there. We can find it. Um, and you just realize, man, like what you think you need it, sometimes you don't. I think that's a big thing to understand, too, is like everybody in their mind may, might want to be Taylor Swift, right. Drake. They want to be the biggest right. thing ever. And sometimes you just don't even need that to really operate what you really want to do, man. If you can right. find a way to have a, a thousand fans play, pay you a hundred, then you're getting a hundred thousand a right. year. If you get 10,000 fans paying you, you know, $20, that's 200,000. You see what I'm saying? So I think, you know, yeah. you just... You, I think you have to figure out what you actually want out of this thing, man. But, you know, if you sign a deal quick, it's usually going to be ugly, man. Yeah. If you, if you want, you want like instant success, sign right. a deal. If you want something of longevity, be independent, right. you know, like, like that's just the simple way to put it, you know, because, um, the people who are able to like leverage what they built, a prime example is 21 Savage, you know, 21 Savage is in a very favorable deal. Right. He, he gets the deal, the label gets, 30%. But the only reason why he was able to get into a deal like that is because he sold a million records right. before he signed a deal, you know? But not, not many artists have sold a million records, you know, like, and can, you know, walk into this conference room and be like, all right, cool, I've sold a million records, like, let's team up and, like, right. let's sell 20 million, but I'm gonna get 70%, and you gonna right. get 30 right. not, not a lot of artists, like, A, are willing to, like, invest and put in that like time and effort and 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 um ultimately just grind it out because it that's 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 what it takes but also like 21 savage didn't do it by himself he had a team right yeah, yeah correct it's not like he just did that he was slinging a million records <laughs> by himself like no bro like he he had a squad and and that's why it's so important when you want to achieve something to that status
to that level of success, yeah. you got to have a team. You got to have the systems in place and you got to have a team to do it. And and that's what I'm learning more and more as an artist and just as, as a person, you know, as a music professional, just as a whole, you know, you can't do anything by yourself, yeah, you know, like, it takes it takes it takes a team effort you know it takes a village it really does all right yeah hey real quick and willie i know you might be having to take off i know you said you you had an hour but i just wanted to since we talked about sync licensing man i, I wanted to see if we can do one thing you know before if you had to leave um if you were trying to tell somebody just like a a specific things that you need to go from creating a song to getting it to submit for a sync license what just what things specifically would you need on that specifically you know i think every everyone should like download a split sheet split sheet number one split sheet number one if you know i remember when i first looked at a split sheet i was like oh shit, where do i find this information where do i find that information mm -hmm. right and that that's the first place of like curiosity to start learning is like down, downloading the split sheet and figuring out, oh, okay, it, you know, it says the song name at the top. If you're writing, you know, Braveheart as your song, all right, where's all the information for my split sheet? That's the curiosity. That should start someone's journey to say, all right, here's all the things that I need to know. If I don't know this, how do I keep Googling, researching to make sure, like, I understand, like, all of this stuff. So that's what, that's the one thing that I recommend, right? Because... The, the biggest thing for sync licensing is just metadata of, you know, all your information, like the BP and metadata could be simple, like the BPM, the songwriter, their, you know, IPI, their, you know, everything that goes to like, who all were part of making this song, like, right. that's the metadata, who all, all, mm -hmm. all these shares of this song, the components, like all of all of that, right? That's the metadata, because when I pitch a song, I pitch my split sheet and also send them my metadata, a spreadsheet. Right. If it's two songs, the spreadsheet that has all the information for those songs, that's essentially the metadata, right? And that would be like the core of, of pitching because it proves if, you know, if, if we all are on one song, it proves, all right, Z owns this many, you own this many, Diamond owns this many, I'm responsible for the composition, who's the publisher we're all the publisher all right what is our publisher's names how, how many shares of publishing do we own on the record mm -hmm. like all all, all all of those details right because mm -hmm. at the end of the day it's like people want to give credit where credit right. is due that's also part of it yep. um and no one wants to place a song and then have z come out of the woodwork and be like yo that's my record like why is, yeah. like I, I you know what i'm saying so like that's that's really it it's as simple as that you know and so like once once i understood that i'm like oh yeah and sometimes it's like i own all this shit 100 percent. so all the credit comes to yeah. me right. you know right but i need to have the document to show i own this shit <laughs> like right. all that's right a you know that's, that's, a that's, that's, that's right. it too and so like that's what i would say is people to understand all right i need to have a split sheet for every song even if i own everything on the song right. yeah if i don't i need to have a split sheet that shows who owns what of what shares and what parts of the song and that's pretty much it mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and that's really what it boils down to when it comes to that word. And I can stay on for a bit longer too. So um, yeah, we can keep you talking. And I think, I think aside from a split sheet, that's the one thing I would say. Number two is like figuring out how you're going to go about sourcing um, or not even sourcing, how you're going to go out pitch that, that whatever song that is, like whatever song that, that you feel is like your strong song, um, how you're going to go about pitching that. Either you can do that solely, like, like by yourself, but that's that's going to take a lot, a lot of time and effort, you know, to to Ed's point. I think another resource that you go about is an agency. Right. You know, I think a lot a lot of artists use agencies to gain sync mm -hmm. licenses because that's the responsibility. Agencies most times they have established relationships, you know, with certain labels with with <clears throat> certain directors. That so they have certain access that you may not have. Um, and we all know what it, we all know what it takes. Like, there's yeah. always keeping in any industry, but specifically in music, there's always going to be gatekeepers. And at the end of the day, it takes money to make money. So like right. signing on with an agency is going to be something that you can like use to your benefit. Like right. they're granted, they're going to take a, a certain cut of whatever it is. Let's say that like they pitch it to this up and coming film that A24 is producing um, and the sync license is for $25,000 their fee is going to be 40%, right. you know, um, 
um, and, and you're only going to get 60%, but like, I'd rather get 60% of that than, than 100% of that. You know, like, I think, you know, so it's, it's not like they're going to be out here doing the Lord's work for free, you know, like, like obviously, like, everything comes with a fee, you know, kind of thing, but I would, it's important. Yeah, I would say, you know what, the, the thing is, like, you know, like, we already talked about this before, like, the, the, the information is out there, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's out there, it's just a matter of where you're putting your, your, your attention to seek the information you, you need, you know, like, you know, and I'm going to drop some gems here. And some of these gems are like, just like podcast episodes that will literally tell you what you need to know. So Jen Malone is the music supervisor for Euphoria. And Euphoria, we know, is it's, it's a hit show. Like her, her, right. catalog, her catalog alone for shows that she works on is massive, you know? And, you know, Yellow Jackets is also another show that, that she works on, right? And there's an episode, a podcast episode, by Ari Hairstand, and he interviews Jen Malone, and they talk specifically about music licensing. And I, I don't remember exactly how long the episode is, but it's super long. But within that time frame, yo, she drops everything you need to know mm. about how to how to pitch, how to pitch to her, you know, what the red flags are, um, and just like when she takes independent versus not, like essentially she tells you everything you need to know in that podcast. And, and how to prepare to pitch music for, you know, to her right. or just any music supervisor in general, yeah. right? And the cool thing is like YouTube, there's so many videos on YouTube. If you were to just Google sync licensing, music supervisor, whatever, so many episodes out there that cover how to actually like get into this side of the business, what you need to have, what you need to know, all of that, right? It's all out right. there, yeah. you know? And so... You know, that's that's one advice I would give is like for people to just even just Google this shit again. Like I said before to Diamond's question, the hard part is investing the time to learn. Right. Because it is time right. time consuming. Right. But like it is it is out there of everything you need to know, you know. Um, even even my own YouTube channel, I have a playlist with over fifteen videos and those right. fifteen right. videos would cover top down everything you need to know. And I'll share it out with you if you can you hear can you share that yeah. link, man? That would be yeah, cool. It brings Right. It's down everything you need to know from like mechanical license, right. music publishing, like literally all the components. But it, it takes so much time. I don't even know how much time it is if I were to like see if it totals hours for me. But it's 38 videos total. Right. But all those 38 videos. I mean, we all we we all binge watched the Netflix show <laughs> before. This is you, we, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If we really want the knowledge, we'll get it. You know what right, I'm saying? That's right. a fact. Yeah. Like for yeah. me, I, I'll give you this. When, when I watch a show, I'm, I'm watching a show, not just for entertainment, but I'm watching a show. Like, you know, I, I, I get my Shazam up. If, if I come across a cool record, I'll go, I'll, I'll, I'll Shazam it while the episode is going on. And mm -hmm. then I will go to IM, IMDB, IM, whatever that site, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I will go there and find out every information that I need to know about that song. So essentially like journey mapping that song. Through that work, I'm going to find out who the music supervisor is. I'm going to mm. find out, like, every information that I need to know. And then once I find out who the supervisor is, then I'm going to find out what other sh shows the supervisor is working on. The cool right. thing about IM IMBBD, right. or, <laughs> yeah, you know, is that it shows you what shows are also coming out. You know, like, today, I watched this thing on Netflix and the shows that they're about to release for 2024, this, this year, from like Bridgerton, like every, almost every show that we already know, right? Mm -hmm. Some of these shows could, could, are the show still in like, you know, in the final like stages? It could be, but that's right. an automatic indication that if I wanted to pitch, I need to figure out who the supervisors are for these shows, mm -hmm. what type of music mm -hmm. they're working with. And sometimes the right. type of music they're working with is to backtrack and figure out what shows these supervisors are working on because ideally they work with the same catalog, you know? Um, yeah. Some of the supervisors, what you know, what they're trying to do is like they're trying to build their bank of artists as well. Mm -hmm. So ideally, right. you know, if you know that okay, so and so works with that music very similar to J Cole, then you kind of have a frame of reference to say this is the the type of music they usually work with. Yeah. So if you're if you're an artist that works within that fashion, boom, that's a supervisor you need to get to know. That's a supervisor you need to to get in contact with. That's a, a supervisor you need to build a relationship with. You know, like. I went to a conference once and 
this this agent was talking about how she flew to a city because she found out that that music supervisor owns a bakery shop and she wow. flew to wow. the city to buy a fucking cookie <laughs> from the shop because that was her way to actually build a connection uh -huh. wow. a, one you know a personal connection with that particular supervisor to introduce herself all of that like she mm -hmm. flew to wow. this state to yeah. buy a cookie yeah. from this bakery shop that mm -hmm. this music supervisor works at right and since then she talks about all the different placements she's had from this one opportunity of wow. her taking this plane to buy a cookie mm -hmm. <laughs> The cookie yeah. ever, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Even if the cookie was ever... best cookie of all time, my but, brother. But you, you know what I'm saying? They're like that's that's also just a testament in in believing in your research, right? And yeah. believing in the doors you know can open with the actions you are taking. Mm -hmm. You know, right. and to this day, like this one particular agent, like yo, there's there's I just posted it the other weekend. If you were watching my story. Like first scene, season two of Swagger. First scene, it was her song that she plays with the artists that she worked with, and I yeah. knew it because I know both of them. So I'm like, I'm in the gym watching Swagger season two, first right. episode, and I recognize the song, and I'm like, yo, and I hit them up. I'm like, yo, congratulations, you know, because I know that show was mad yeah. money too. Right. Because that's the season, that season premiere, you know. But it's it's just as simple as that. It's like some of the people that you you you, you think. You know, like you, you don't know the journey that they went through or like the effort right. that they had to do to land that placement or the work that they put in. And so like that's why some of the agents like they take fifty percent because it's it's a lot of work for right. them to actually right. put your music to get it selected and that's just how standard it goes in the business. It's fifty percent and it's fifty percent for a reason, right. you know. Um mm -hmm. but yeah, it's 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 as simple as that. It's like doing the work. Right. That's true. Yep. That's some gems right there, bro. I'm a, I, I can't wait to chop this up and just look at this little piece that you just talked about again. Like right. this is, there's some heavy gems in this moment right here, man, for sure. I got, yeah. I got Jen Malone's video queued up on my YouTube. <laughs> you got for it. For real, man. Jen Malone, she's, and right. so Jen, Jen Malone, she's a, she, and you know, when I, when I listened to that podcast, like it's an interesting story of how she was like at the peak of her career, left her job and became an intern. Became Wow. Became an intern. Like she was making mad money touring with right. you know, some of the biggest artists, biggest names, and she she just built a career for herself by just being an intern, you know, and like it's a great podcast. Like Ari right. Herstan interview with Jen Malone, music supervisor. Check out that podcast. It's an amazing right. podcast. And, and shout out to Ari, Ari Herstan too, man. Like he he be dropping right. gems, man. He uh, he's 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 some Somebody who's who's very dedicated to the life of like independence yeah. and what that looks yeah. like as, so yeah. shout yeah. as well. And as we talk through this, there's something that hits for me, man. Um, it's that's why it's so important to kind of know which where you right. want to go with your music, right. right? Like, you know, it's so important to have your brand together and just kind of so you know. Am I am I looking for sync licenses? Am I is my biggest thing touring? There's some there's some artists right that never perform mm -hmm. and only mm -hmm. do sync. Licensing, you know what I mean, and they probably love that. And there's some artists that be like, "Man, I want to be out there in the field." You know what I'm saying? I want to be touching the people. I want to be. You see what I'm saying? That's why it's so important to kind of understand like yourself and and then pivot in the way that you want towards different pieces in the music. Man, I think that's important. Mm -hmm. Yo, I know, I know an artist who gets he strives for three placements a year, and that's his full time job. Oh wow, that's insane. But but. Yeah. Like, like, so if you could, if you could think about that alone, that just tells you this brother makes enough money yeah. to only right. do four placements a year. That's crazy. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. that's like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Like, all you mm -hmm. work, I mean, yeah. that's all you, that's all you work on is just four, you get four placements and that's like, you know, like at least 300 grand. Right. I think yeah. one of them said that like they make a year, 300 grand off of just. Right three or four placements and that's yeah. all they work on every year that's, oh damn and, and that's what i was gonna say i was like that's the, the caveat of it is right it's like if you don't get any placements you don't make anything but like right. it, it, it's also like it's like a sale the the, the, the hard job <laughs> all commission you know maybe it's all commission based so it's just like, <laughs> what work from home and then do places man. just work from home <laughs> but you gotta think if like that's all you're dedicated to like the entire year like i'm just gonna hone in on this and i'm gonna right. get 
for the year. Like, you got to think, like, look, I'm going to land at least one. And, and I think we talk about it all the time. The hardest thing to do is to secure the first one. Once right. you secure the first yeah. one, it's always a little bit yeah. easier. Yeah. Because now I can use that as leverage. Like, hey, my song was featured in season two, episode four of Euphoria. You know, now you can use that as leverage. It's like, cool, right. like, hey, my like, you can catch my song here. Right. Um, let me know if, if this song fits for any other other potential um, projects that you're working on and stuff like that. Going to that exact same music supervisor or even leveraging it with others. And so um, that is a caveat, right? Right? It is. A, it's, it's 100% commission. You either get nothing or, or, or everything, you know, but it's just when you dedicate yourself to right. just like, this is all I'm going to work on. And right. if, if I secure two or three uh, sinks for the year, seek licenses for the year, I'm good. You know, like, and it's just like, you're, you're making probably more money than most people make in a year, you right. know, like, like than their annual salary. And it's just now this, this same artist, they're probably not the most well-known. No, they're not. You know, they're not, a, yeah. they're probably not doing it all. all. Like, and, and that's the crazy thing about it is just like, honestly, a lot of the artists who get synced a lot, are not don't well, know them. like yeah. they're not well at all like that's the crazy that's the wow. craziest piece about it is now granted in these like big hollywood budget films right they're obviously going to sing some big artists because they have the budget to do right. so right you know like if you have like, like so for instance in the marvel universe where they have like 200 million dollars per per movie like as far as a budget that's allotted yeah they can go out and find any but the reason why a lot of music supervisors like to work with like relatively unknown artists is because they know that you're not going to charge them like a million dollars to sing your song like you know kind of thing like, okay we can negotiate here you know they can't negotiate with drake drake is like no you got to pay me 10 million dollars to feature my song in your movie right. like there's no negotiating you know yeah. it's but somebody like a, a ramon a dj zenus is just like all right we can offer him fifty thousand dollars and he he might take that you know yeah. kind of just yeah. like bet like say less <laughs> 50 racks that's right 55 i would i would say too like you know like you know and jen kind of talks about this you know initially when sync sync licensing started it was a way to break artists mm -hmm. it was a way to break artists like back in the day you know like you know when you watch your favorite your shows like, you're right. it's the songs that also captivated you you know and back in right. the day like that's how that's how a lot of artists made made their um their money you know lizzo always yeah. talks about that how sync licensing was how she blew up right. mm -hmm. it was through sync licensing you know and see i just saw a recent video the other day seal seal talking about how like he almost quit music you know and it wasn't was until um a, a sync agent picked up one of his songs for a, a movie and it didn't work but he that that agent loved the song so much that um he held on to the song for another movie and i think i can't remember if it's a james bond movie or something it's like the one da, 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 da. oh i know exactly oh, it's, it's yeah yeah it's yeah, like, yeah yeah and, Sorry, yeah and he talks about that and then he always till this day shows so much gratitude mm. for that music supervisor because that music supervisor changed his career right you know and 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 it could be simple kept it, alive, almost, huh? it, kept, it kept him yeah. alive and it kept it alive and then from there people are like yo this song is dope who's this artist you know and, yeah. and he's been on he he had been grinding forever yeah. right you know and sometimes yeah. it just it just takes that one person yeah. To, to help you get your break and it might be the most random person that you just didn't know what's going to be important mm -hmm. to you you know yep. um and so that's that's just the thing about just the music industry in general is that like you have to focus your attention somewhere you yeah. know because at the end of the day like uh, the outcome is that we want to make money right that's the outcome we, right. we want to make money you know mm -hmm. but the way to get there is like a trillion avenues you yeah. know yeah it's not it's, so, right so it's just a matter of like which which highway do you want yeah. to take <laughs> and, I most, I say, most... and i say highway because it ain't easy so it's which yeah, highway yeah. do you want to yeah. take yeah that's, a... no, it's, that's true because i did that 
I feel like, like you just explained, so many, so much, so many ways you can like navigate and make money, right? But I think most people nowadays, the only way to know, you just want to be the face, right? I want to be the biggest star. But now, I'm, you know, I'm trying to learn that you don't always have to be the biggest star to like find ways to like make money, right? You can like earn a decent income doing other things, which just like whole different avenues you can navigate and figure it out. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's very interesting, you know, for someone who's, you know, who's starting a music, re- realizing that they can make a career out of this and doing something completely different by not being known, but they can still get paid yeah. and provide for their family. That's yeah, because awesome. the, the crazy thing about it is a lot of these artists who are like heavily synced and stuff like that, they're probably making more money than like a lot of these major label artists. Wow. Because earlier, a lot of these major label artists are not in favorable deals. Right. So Oh, can hear you. You can't hear you. Now. Uh, oh, go ahead. We can hear you now. A phone call, my bad. But um, <laughs> <laughs> they they may be a very well known face, right. but it's because they're not in a favorable deal. So obviously, like the, the, that's why the label's pushing them. So they may only see fifteen percent of that right. deal, and so like even though their face is seen everywhere, it's just like you know. I know Big Sean talked about that in um. Uh, one of his interviews is just like, you know, when he first started with good music, like, you know, he didn't really make money until like, like his second album. Like, you know, like, like I, I, I wasn't really like seeing anything like, like it was like cool to like be in like all these places and whatnot and, and, and doing all these things. But it's just like, bro, I couldn't even buy my mama house, you know, like kind of yeah. just, whereas, you know, to EB's point, you know, this person who's only focused on getting, you know, three sinks a year, like, it's just like, bro. I could, I could, uh, my one one year's annual salary, I could right. count, you know, like I could go and put a down payment on, on, on a house with one of those placements, you know, kind of thing. And it's just like, you know, to that point, point where, where do you, where do you want to like put all your eggs in, 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 in the, into the, into which basket, you know, like kind of thing. And so right. uh, some people just don't want to be famous and just want to be very well known. Um, right. Other people, I think for a lot of us, honestly probably for the for the musicians on this right now want to be sustainable at the end of the day like i want to sustain a a a, a long and and uh thriving career you know something that i can live off of and and be proud of you know even even if i'm not a drake or anything like that and it's just like interesting how like your idea of success evolves over the years you know like if you would have asked 20 year old z like what does success look like i'd be like Yo, I gotta be the next Drake, baby. I gotta be the next Lil Wayne. Like, I, I gotta be, I gotta, I gotta be the, the the name that everybody knows, you know, kind of thing. Whereas now I'm like, I'm cool with just chilling, and I'm just like, I might tour as a DJ, and if I could just like get my music synced into like a bunch of film and TV, yeah. I'd be, I, 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 I don't even have to tour as an artist. I just tour as a DJ and be chilling, you know, like kind of right. thing. So, you know, one one thing I've been thinking about recently, you know, it's like the the record label structure is is set up the way it's set up because of the revenue and and you know just the amount of capital that it generates mm-hmm. right like right. It, it's it's a perfectly oiled weld machine mm-hmm. you know tiktok is definitely changing how they go about you know ch- right. changing the spokes on the wheel but at the end of the day like it's still there you know and right. so something that I think about, and I've always thought this, and you know, is that every artist wants to do it by themselves. They want they want to get the credit and say, right. I did this by myself, blah, 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 blah. But like, when you look at like popular songs, there's a reason why there's like fucking 25 songwriters on the song sometimes, mm-hmm. you know? Yep. Mm-hmm. Because yep. it takes, it takes that amount of geniuses and and creative writers to to bring the music to to life, you know, to bring produ- production team to like get it where it needs to be for everyone to love it the minute it's released, the minute it's marketed, and all of that, right? So if record labels know that and see that and bring these teams together to create timeless records that we're forever going to mm-hmm. love. Why why don't we do it as independent artists? Mm-hmm. You know, Agreed. like why don't we do it? Like, you know, like an example for myself is like projects that I'm gonna release coming up in in April. Right. I wrote the song, but I'm not the one playing the guitar. I'm not the one pre- playing. You know, a lot of the melodies and all of that. It's like I'm bringing Eman. I'm bringing Brittany. Right. I'm bringing people 
who I know have an element of talent that can take this song to the next level. You mm-hmm. know, even though I can do it all by myself, sure, right? But I go to this record and I'm like, no, Britney's, Britney's, song, Britney's voice is the best for this record. So right. I'm going to yeah. have her sing the whole song. Yeah. Right. You know, E-Man's the one that I know I can bring, like, what's out of my head from an instrumentation standpoint into, like, the actual rhythm, right. you know? And so it's like, if record labels are doing it, like, why aren't we independent artists doing it? Like, why do we feel like we have to be the one to do everything, to generate everything? Because at the end of the day, it's like, we all want to eat. We all want to feed our right. family. Sure. And at the end of the day, like when the song's successful, like we all want to be able to ride that success together. We all want to be able to promote the records because if I have 5K followers, E has, you know, 3K followers, Bree has 1K followers or whatever, like the reach of our audience is like right. where the value lies, right. you know? And so I don't think a lot of artists really think about it when they think about collaboration because we're attached to our own egos that right. you know we don't want to bring people together with us and my next projects people will see like there's some records that you you won't even right. know i was like right. the architect behind it because i'm not the face of the record right. Right. you know someone right. else is the face of the record but at the end of the day it's like we're working as a team to like really make that record be successful yeah Absolutely. that's fire and then everybody part of that record wants to see it be successful too right. Right. you know what i mean right. so like you know just because it might not be your voice you still want that song synced, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. for damn sure you want them split sheets, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. That's a, for real though, for real. Uh, absolutely. All right, we are almost getting closer to time. Yeah. Is there any, uh, anything else you guys want to add to that, Z? Any closing remarks? I just want to say shout out to Maule, man. Um, and, and side note, I, I know I know you just touched on it. We're really excited for this project that you're dropping in April. Can you can you can you spill any more right. details? Like, is there a name for the project? Like, like what what can you share as of right now? Man, you know me. When I release, when I go marketing, I'm super creative with it. So, um, you know, it's a it's a four song EP. It's mm-hmm. gonna be two projects, but the first one that's gonna drop is a four song EP. Uh, it's all acoustic, all acoustic, right. um, mm-hmm. with a lot of like her type references daniel caesar type references you know right. kind of like the the r&b that is still ringing till this day um and the cool thing that i love about this project is you know it again just a collaboration people that i admire people that i respect and people that i also want to see shine through my platform right. and, and be recognized for for their talents and so I'm, I'm more excited for the collaboration and what like just a new sound for people to, to admire and, and respect from what we can produce. And then I'm also collaborating with a buddy of mine to design the artwork okay. for the cover right. art, like all sketched. Um, and then, you know, talking about merch is going to be something that we're going to put on merch, but it's going to be like an artistic design uh, right. that we're going to print on, on shirts that, you know, going back to collaborations, I'm also going to partner with a local agency here for, you know, half of the proceeds to go to some of the work that they're doing there. And so like, again, what? talking about branding <laughs> is that Yo, once you guys, merge all, I made it. all of the I branding, made it. Um, it, it makes sense, you know, and, and at the end of the day, it's like, you're not doing the work for yourself. Like let, let your product speak for itself, but find the ways for the product to actually like build a story. And that's what I'm excited Absolutely. about. And when is that, when is that EP going to be out? So right now we're shooting for we're shooting for the month of April, on um, just because of like the some of the subject matters and April also being um, the, um, Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Um, we want to partner with with that team theme, and I think that, that's another thing I'm I'm gonna drop in terms of like a gem is that there's there's a theme in, within every fucking month. Yeah. Like when you think about it, like yeah. there's a theme for every month, and and people people don't, people don't think about aligning themselves with what's happening this month what's the because at the end of the day when you're marketing you're kind of competing with whatever theme might be going on within that month and so if you have a song that has a particular subject matter what month you know is there like a national whatever day or whatever like you know what i'm saying that you can capitalize when it comes to your marketing and people don't think about that sometimes but i i definitely do and so, um, yeah, it, it's going to be in April. That's what we're shooting for. It's going to happen in April as long as, like, everything falls within the timeline, the design, all of that. And so 
um that's what we're shooting for and that's another thing too people need to have timelines for their releases like when it comes to marketing like don't just wake up and pick a month like set it out each yeah. month right. what are you going to do to make sure that when that pro the project is released your product is released like you know the success that you foresee actually happens and then if things are not happening what is your next month's plan to mm -hmm. see the domino fall effect or to pivot when you need to people just don't think about that and, right. and artists need to think about that like we said like you are a business yep. you got to operate how businesses operate right. if your shit flops what's your backup plan yeah you know mm -hmm. That's the fact. And there's a market for everybody too, man. So yeah. every gotta remember that, man. So and why you while we got you on here, I just wanted to say this, Manuela, man. Big shout out to you, man. You were you were a reason that, you know, I had the the Black Sands project business buttoned up so well, man. And yeah, it's, yeah. it's so crazy. It's so crazy. I remember one of the producers, I, I walked into a, a, a different studio session and one of the producers was like, Man, I loved working with Ramon, man. He just had all the split sheets together. And I just heard him talking, I was like, I like that. The only reason that moment happened was because that meeting that I had with you. You know what I'm saying? And I was just like, yeah. "Yo, I got," and I, and I, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't take. I wanted to take all the credit, but you know, what I, mean? I was like, "My man, Wule really got me right, man." But, man, but like, even hearing your name ring in places like that is because most artists don't deal with people that do good business because people don't know the business. You know what yeah. I mean? So, like, even me not knowing it, you giving me so much game to make that project be buttoned up to where everybody got their deserving yeah. piece yeah. and you know what i mean and nobody ever forgets when they yeah. when they when they're credited first on yeah. the record but then when when you know when the, when the system's created and money's flowing through it everybody touches their fair piece man yeah. so you know just shout out to you for you know you know put um put me on so much game yeah. man I, that 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 stuff that sits with me to, to this day yeah. bro anytime but like I said, uh, the the selfless nature of of EB of Mawale is is something that has been uh, just pivotal in 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 my career too. You know, just like being able to soak up the knowledge. Just because, like I said, most creatives just don't right. know don't, don't know where to start and and those types of things. And yeah. and having people like yourself who can mentor to a degree and and, and share that wealth of knowledge. You know and that's also a testament to yourself. Like one thing that I don't like, especially in our industry, we 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 touched on it earlier. There's so much gatekeeping, right? Okay. And that's something that I've always recognized is that like you're always willing to share. Um, and somebody actually shout out to whoever I can't remember who it was. Somebody hopped in the chat earlier and was just like, "Yo, like um, EB is like like my is uh, is as solid as they come." And and I just wanted to like reiterate that message is like that's that's something. Anybody who has something bad to say about my way, I'm like, nah, you, you have to come see me first. Like, yeah, I, yeah, you got a problem with me too, brother. <laughs> my dog, my dog is, 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 as, is as solid as they come, man. You know, so just a huge testament to to, to you and um, appreciate it. You've done and and that you're going to continue to do. We're excited, obviously, for the for the projects to come, and uh, I'm sure we'll probably collaborate yeah. on a lot of things in the future. You know, so. Exactly. No doubt. Yeah, shout out to Appreciate you. it. Yeah, because Zia reminds me a lot of good things about you, bro. When it comes to, you know, I know you as a person, you're a good person, but when it comes to like a music standpoint, they always say a lot of good things about you. You know, you like that type of person who never just hold information and not share, man. Your goal is you just want to help everyone become yeah. better. I love it, bro. Yeah. And also, man, thanks for coming on yeah. the spot. Network official, I appreciate you. I appreciate you have, uh, being here today, man. Spreading, giving good information, and gems to everyone out here today. I appreciate, it, bro. Shout Means a lot. Sharing gems, time and energy. Yeah. And sh big yes, shout sir. out to everyone who tuned in today. I appreciate, it, guys. Make sure you follow the page, man. We're gonna be yeah. doing this every Monday. Yes, yeah, sir. Exciting things. To come. Yeah. And make sure you follow my Wule music too, because Absolutely. make sure you do that, brother. Yeah. Appreciate you all. All right, all right fellas. Let's do it. Appreciate the time, man. Y'all be easy, right. fellas. Love it.